Hello Bampton fans and welcome to this Goosen Inferno Plus Bampton Racket Review and this is Racket Test number 623. Now if we start with availability and price, the price currently in the UK is around 100 to 120 pounds. We'll be selling this racket at www.badminton-racket-review.com. Availability is as good as it gets with Goosen right now uh, across the world. It's never been more available than it is right now. So it's good to see brands that people are unfamiliar with coming in to Europe and the UK. Um, we can get these rackets on about a seven to 10 day lead time if we sell out. Um, in terms of the racket specs, let's compare the racket specs, Goosen's racket specs to our own Bamta Racket View E-Zone specification testing. So the overall weight of this racket is 83 plus or minus one gram. Uh, we are E-Zone testing shows us to weigh 88.3 grams. And by comparison, the Inferno, which we tested last year, weighed 88.4. So very similar weight. The uh, balance of the racket is towards the head, according to Goosen. And the Racket Review E-Zone balance point test shows this racket to be head heavy also maybe a little bit more than they're suggesting so quite uh well certainly towards the head at 309 the inferno was 312 balance point 312 mil balance point slightly that's barely any difference to be honest um the shaft stiffness here is towards stiff so just past medium flex and heading towards medium stiff, I'd suppose. And the balance, uh, the <coughs> racket review E-zone stiffness test shows this to be a stiff racket. And the Inferno was medium flex. So, medium flex. so it's slightly less flexible, the Inferno, and the Inferno Plus slightly stiffer. Um, Okay, so in terms of the design, well, if you've seen the Inferno video, if you're an ESO member, you've seen the Inferno. Absolutely crazy design racket. Absolutely crazy. Um, both the Inferno and the Inferno Plus made in Taiwan, so really high quality. I'm telling you, there is no manufacturer that can produce rackets to the level that Goose and I mean, this has got waves in the head and each one of them is absolutely perfect. And it's like it's got carbon, looks like it's got carbon, uh, it's certainly got a carbon design, I'm not sure it's made of carbon, but it is absolutely astonishing. If you've ever seen one of these things close up, you'll never see a, a uniquer racket than this. Absolutely astonishing. Um, whatever it, is, it always says it's got pyro feel made by Mitsubishi. <clears throat> but I'm not sure if everybody's going to be familiar with what that actually means. But wow, wow to the design. Matte finished, very little colour on it, so it's very sort of Batman-like design. Dark, beautifully done, beautifully finished. Um, before we go on to the close-up images, the other information you'll want to know is it is a maximum string tension of 32 pounds, so very nice. Well done, Goosen. Um, and our grip here is a G5 grip. The racket weight, going back to the racket weight, our weight obviously is with the Yonex BG65 strings in place. They make about a three to four gram difference. <coughs> Anything else? Overall length, 680 mil. Well, we have our own measurement on the dimensions. No, nothing else. So going back to the design, here are some close-up images for you to take a look at this absolute astonishing piece of art that has been created by Goose and absolutely astonishing. Take a look at this. Okay, so now we've been through the specifications, let's now move on to the Racket E-Zone.
Okay, so before we start our E-Zone testing, what do you need to know about how we test our rackets? Well, first of all, we use the same shuttles, the Yonix AS30s on all tests. We string, restring all of the rackets with Yonix BG65 at 25 pounds tension. And it's the same player taking all of the shots. Right, now you have some basic understanding of how we test. Let's move on to the smash test. The smash shot that you're seeing here and for all of the rackets we've tested within Badminton Racket Reviews E-Zone, uh, we take generally six shots. We take the two highest uh, racket uh, shuttle speeds and we average those to give us a uh, overall speed. If those two uh, if those two readings are not within a certain percentage of each other, we then retake the entire test. This shot measures the shuttle speed uh, coming off the racket head, and also if you go across to the E zone, you'll see a picture similar to the one you're looking at on the screen now, which accompanies every single racket within the E zone, so that's nearly 650 or more rackets with this kind of smash JPEG showing you the racket head speed, the shuttle speed, the distance, and the approximate repulsion of the racket. Right, our first test in the E-Zone is the smash test. Let's do it now. Okay, it's time now for a E-Zone manoeuvre test. The manoeuvre shots was designed to tell us about the racket's acceleration abilities, its ability to shift from one direction to the other or shift quickly from nothing to full speed. It also tests the racket's um, aerodynamics. In this test, the player is sitting still with the racket and once the shuttle is fired, which we, and we measure the shuttle speed to ensure we have uh, consistency within the tests, so it's coming at the same speed all the time, or roughly the same speed as, as, as much as we can control anyway. Um, and then the player reacts once the shuttle is fired to hit the shuttle, and we are measuring the head speed of the racket during that test. Okay, now we want to see how good this racket is at controlling the shuttlecock. Let's go across to the E-Zone control test. The E-Zone control test is a simple test. It's, uh, we've, we've had a lot of comments about this test. Uh, the first thing you should know is that 14 shots are in total are taken, not just what you see on camera. Um, the player is aiming for the green bucket which scores the highest, the grey bucket scores slightly less than anything in the net or out scores nothing at all. Now the same rules apply on this test as they do on any other court test. It's the same shuttle, it's the same string, same tension, same player. Um, now we have uh, retaken the test with the same rackets to see what kind of variation we get and we generally find that the results are within 10 to 12 percent of each other so the, the test is not that bad and it is generally very hard to come up with a control test uh, that's better than this. We've tried. So, but if any of you have any suggestions on how we should proceed with control tests in the future, please do give constructive answers that are helpful.
So we've been through the racket specs. We've compared the racket specs to the Goosen Inferno. We have uh, done the E-Zone testing and the extended court testing for our E-Zone members. What do we conclude with this racket? Well, actually, it's a welcome improvement over the Inferno because when you've got a racket that is so unique as this is, it would be nice if it was backed by really good performance. And actually, the Inferno Plus has done pretty well. It can, it has a very, very good airspeed. It has good airspeed. I still think it could be quicker. I still think the, the Abros Venom is quicker. The Computenu is 100% quicker. Um, it's, but it is quick in the air. I'm just going through the notes here on the racket and you know what you'll find with this racket is it does do most things reasonably well so it scored very well in the e-zone testing and it scored very well uh, in the extended court testing would we recommend this racket for singles players absolutely um, it does deliver well on control it delivers an okay a decent decent power in terms of smash and you do get um, clearing with it is not bad at all the, the only problem with this racket is it scored really well and it's a lovely racket to use and beautiful to look at the, the only problem is 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 and I, you know out of all the rackets that we tested i understand why they have to charge 100 120 pounds this cannot be cheap to make this is absolutely astonishing material um and sto astonishingly astonishingly well produced i am a goose and fan in terms of in terms of its quality they're really like Bentley or Porsche kind of engineering, you know, that if we're comparing them to cars, that is really amazing. So the problem to recommend the racket is not that it can't perform, it does perform. A singles player is going to enjoy using this racket. Um, it, it, it delivers well on drive, it delivers well on defense, it delivers a reasonable smash, it delivers a reasonable control. So again, doubles players are going to enjoy using this racket and there's going to be nothing like it in the marketplace that looks anything close to it so where is the hesitation the hes hesitation only comes in when we're looking at the 100 pound marker and what's available for below it and above it you know you have to consider the jpx range 8.5 8.1 pro in the limited edition you have to consider the nano flare 270 you have to consider the king k9 by kawasaki you have to consider the Abros Venom, the Abros Nano 9900, the Apex Wave 10. You have to consider so many things before you make this purchase. So, I'm going to give the racket a thumbs up. Singles or doubles players, you're not going to feel disappointed using this racket. It's nice. I do think it could be that little bit quicker in the air. It, you know, like I said, if you compare it to, say, a Kampu 10 <laughs> that's like a, a Ferrari uh, compared to this in the air. That's so quick. Abros Venom still quicker, I think, than this in the air, but still all around this does deliver good performance for singles and doubles players alike, and you will not find a uniquer looking racket on the planet than this, or in the history of the sport perhaps. Absolutely amazing, absolutely amazing, and a an welcome improvement over the Inferno. It just has that little plus edge. The Inferno Plus has a little edge over the Inferno and it does perform really well with a 32, string, uh, 32 pound maximum string tension. That's a lot of confidence in the frame. I think, yeah, I, I, you know what, to, I would say try the racket out. Try it out. It, you're not going to be disappointed. Definitely not. At 100 pound, it's difficult, but at least I can say, look, it's a hundred pound because this head is designed absolutely amazingly well. You're not going to feel Yonex rackets are not better made than this. Leaning rackets are not better made than this. There is no one who makes better rackets than Goose, and I'm not saying they're the best. I'm saying there's no one better. They compete with the absolute top range when it comes to stability, and when it comes to engineering, and when it comes to finishing, they're absolutely at the top. So, well done, Goose, and lovely, lovely racket is getting our thumbs up. Um, if you're using this Goose and Inferno Plus or the Goose and Inferno, leave a review on the E-Zone. It's already on there. There's a page for the Inferno. Leave a review there. If you are not familiar with the E-Zone, there is a video tour shortly after this video. 
And if you don't intend to enjoy the E-Zone and support us and the Bamsley community, it's, listen, I didn't mean it like that, it's up to you, then leave a review on any of the social media platforms. We do monitor them. People are hesitant to leave their remarks because YouTube, particularly, you get backlash. Facebook, you can get backlashes from people. Um, we don't mind people objecting to someone else's review, providing it's all done in a helpful manner, not in a uh, we, let's have, have a fight over it kind of. That's just pointless and not helpful. So not interested in any of that, but we are interested in getting information for other people to benefit from, other players to benefit from, of all ages, of all genders. So <clears throat> outside of that, thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys are amazing. You guys are true fans of the sport, true fans of, and you clearly care about the sport. You clearly care about what rackets you use. We really appreciate it. Uh, we're going to carry on doing what we're doing. You carry on doing what you're doing. Keep the likes going. Keep the shares going. And thank you, thank you, thank you again for tuning in today. I'm done here. We'll see you on the next video.